you know, I, um, as Gary knows, I, I've been very fortunate. We've, Another 84 year old, Mike. <laughs> I, I, know, I told you, I'm a geriatric uh, interventionist. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, um, what happens when you hang around a long time? Yeah. Um, this was a patient that was, um, I was consulted on at, at uh, uh, the Crosstown Hospital, 84 year old with chronic atrial fibrillation. No one had atrial fibrillation. And uh, the dentist had stopped her anticoagulation for some type of dental procedure. And she had developed a sudden onset of a cold pain for the right upper extremity. So we transferred her to our facility. She was put on heparin. And we, we actually, she was pretty ischemic. So we did her that night. Of course it was at night. So uh, go ahead to the next uh, slide. So that's what we were dealing with. Um, um, fairly tortuous um, um, brachial artery. Um, go ahead to the next slide. Um, we, um, we did a pounce device. We actually did one pass is all. And that's the, the lower frame is the reestablished flow. And if you go to the next frame, um, I think it shows really that we reestablished flow. And I, I didn't bring all the pictures down, but we reestablished flow and she had flow into the radial and ulnar artery. There was some tortuosity and irregularity, but in fact, we didn't do anything other than one pass with the pounce device. And um, um, you can't go to the next one. I think there's some clot material that's removed. No, maybe not. Okay. Um, so, you know, we were obviously very pleased with this. Um, and um, this is a patient that in the past traditionally would have gone to the operating room. Um, 84, you know, um, you know, clearly at risk just from the standpoint of age. And again, to the points that were raised earlier about operating room time, this was at night, um, would have had to call a team in. Um, so from an expense standpoint, um, there really is tremendous cost saving to be able to do this with a device rather than no general anesthesia, no operating room time. Um, and uh, so if you go to the next, just a couple of teaching points that was single pass, no additional therapy. We avoided an operation. There was no lytic therapy um, in basically an elderly high risk patient. Um, you know, I have used lytic therapy and tried in the past. It doesn't work very well in these organized uh, AFib events typically. So, um, so anyway, so I thought it was a nice teaching point and it was a, a nice case, didn't take very long. And um, uh, uh, it was a nice, uh, a nice outcome. Oh, no, I appreciate that, Michael. Um, no, look, man, you could unpack a lot of, out of this, you know, this case and, you know, it, it's really interesting. I couldn't agree with you more, you know, at 84 years old, you know, 84 year old people don't do well in the operating room, even with a simple cut down in the brachial artery, you know, overall, statistically speaking, you know, yeah, you'll, we'll get lucky and have to do a few and do it with local anesthesia or IV sedation or, or what have you, but you're not going to get the 84 year old person, you know, going home the next day kind of scenario, unlike maybe a 45 or 60, you know, 60 year old person or something like that. So uh, the good thing with a case like this is that I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Like in our practice, now that we have this device and we, we do these cases just like this, we will absolutely take a seven French system, go down someone's arm and do one pass. You know what I mean? And they can literally go home within 12 hours or, or you know, or within 24 hours. Uh, it, it's really amazing. And not only that, I mean, if it goes down into the radio artery or the ulna artery, you could just nick it, you know, add that second pass to it or what have you. The length of the device is usually not a, a major issue unless someone's, you know, over six foot three or something like that. And in, in this kind of scenario, uh, but no, man, I, I think this is great. I mean, this is what we're seeing with this kind of device and, and the case you had before, I just wanted to make a quick point. Like that's very common, Mike. Like we're, we're not just seeing that in iliacs. We're seeing that in SFAs. We're seeing a lot of this thrombus in these, in these occlusive lesions or these pre-occlusive lesions that uh, you're just not really appreciating them on angiography until you do that intervention, that atherectomy, that angioplasty or what have you. And then all of a sudden it's shutting down or there's clot down the leg. And you're literally like, I didn't, you know, unless you put IVUS down there, you wouldn't know, you know? 
Uh, it's not acute, so you don't really appreciate that. So I appreciate these cases, man. Yeah, and I think the, the big thing from a value standpoint is, you know, in that elderly population, like you said, you keep them overnight and now they think they're at Cedar Point or some other place when they were 20 years old and they're confused and now you have social work and they've got a bed full for sometimes four or five days, maybe more. And instead of going home, they're going to a, a assisted nursing facility. So it, it really drags on the healthcare system. So I think, especially in Mike Backrack's population, um, we see a huge <laughs> cost. I'm just kidding, Mike. A, a huge cost savings. But even for the, the younger patient, you know, like you said, you know, we can send these patients home really quickly because it's a small puncture. You know, they're not getting over, you know, any type of general anesthetic and they can get back to, you know, do their daily routine pretty quickly and, and free up another bed for another patient that these days, you know, our hospitals are full. So great cases, Mike, really appreciate it.